Hello, and welcome to Tap That MTG, the show where we tell you everything we know about Magic the Gathering. That's probably wrong, but fun to talk about. I'm Leslie. And I'm Shauna. Today we are bringing you number two in the series of our uh, Commander 2020 uh, deep dives. These are decks that are coming out with Aquaria, and we are super excited to mm. dive into them, tell you how we would play this deck, uh, how, what, how the cards work, what some of the mechanics are, and just basically what to do. If you stick around to the end, we have some tweaks <laughs> that we would make afterwards. So yeah, Shauna, what is this commander that we're talking about, and what does this <laughs> deck do? Well, this deck is called Arcane Maelstrom, and its main purpose is just to be annoying. You're basically yeah. going to be copying all your damn spells over and over again on everyone else's turn and never letting anybody play. And you're going to use your commander's ability to do that, to copy um, instances. And it's also making him bigger at the same time. So he is a very cool um, elemental dinosaur uh, called Calamax the Storm Sire. It's f he's for one, a green, a blue, and a red. So not too bad for a 4-4. Four, four. And whenever you cast your first instant spell each turn, if Calamax the Storm Sire is tapped, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. Plus, whenever you copy an instant spell, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Calamax. Mm -hmm. So he's just going to be getting bigger and bigger all the time. I love so how you kept so going, plus, plus, plus. <laughs> he's huge. He's going to be crazy. He crazy, is crazy. a pretty crazy commander. And did it, did that say each turn? Yes. So this is where you need to be playing on other people's turns, right? So that's why there's so many instances in this deck, because then each turn you're going to play one of them and copy it and do stupid stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, crazy. it's annoying. <laughs> um. So... I was going to break down this deck a little bit for us and just talk about the colors and the types of cards that are in this deck and the mana curves. So the first thing is just the colors in this deck. Um, it has a fairly even kind of breakdown of colors. We have 14 multicolor, 13 red, 14 green, 14 blue, and seven um, colorless, which are your artifacts that basically do mana ramp and things like that. So very, fairly even around, uh, which is great for when you're playing uh, this deck as far as deciding what land to put in it, as well as being able to have the mana that you need to play your cards. Um, as far as types of card, uh, we do have 22 two creatures, but most of this deck yeah. is centered around instance um, and even some of our creatures that are in this deck have flash because you're going to be wanting to play on your opponent's turn. So we have yeah. uh, one sorcery and 25 enchantment. Along with that, we also have seven artifacts, six enchantments, um, and one planeswalker, and then 22 creatures. So um, 25 instances, not enchantments. Oh, you sorry. Did I say enchantments? I apologize. Yes. 25 instance. instance when, I, yeah. when I said enchantments, I'm like, did I say enchantments? So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Breakdowns on the screen. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. As Don't listen to us. Just watch the screen. Mana curve goes. Exactly. Just watch the screen. I'm sorry if you weren't listening to the podcast. I'm just, you know. Um, <laughs> As far as mana curve goes, this is actually a solid mana curve. We have mm -hmm. most of our cards in the 2, 3, and 4 mana cost, 11, 17, and 16. We have a few cards in 5, 6, and 7, but not that many. We have a couple yeah. cards that are 1 mana cost. Those are kind of like your cheap artifacts that help you with mana ramp anyway. Because you're wanting to be able to cast these instants and then copy them or have enough mana to right. pay for another spell that allows you to copy said instant. So you don't want to run out of mana. That being said, this deck does have 38 mana in it. So when we get to the mm -hmm. land, we're going to talk a little bit more about that, but you don't need 38 mana. And so we would definitely recommend that's where you start the tweaking. Yeah, yeah for sure. So that's pretty much it for the breakdown of this. Um, what, how are we talking about this, uh, this deck? 
Well, we're going to follow that formula that Leslie used in her video from a few weeks ago that was how to, uh, it was a formula that was how to build your own homebrew commander deck. Mm -hmm. So we're going to, we evaluated our last commander deck on that um, and we're going to evaluate this one as well. So the first section we're going to do is uh, the ramp mana generator section. So the formula says you should have about 15. This deck has about 12, which is pretty good. So um, the first card is uh, the artifact creature that's for four. It's a 2-2. Two -two. The Solemn Simulcrum. I'm sure you've heard of him before if you've been a commander player for any length of time. Mm -hmm. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card. Put that card onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. And then when he dies, you can draw a card. So it's a little bit of card draw in that too. Yeah. Crop rotation is an instant. So it has it only costs one and you do have to sacrifice you do have to sacrifice a land in order to play this one but you can search your library for a land card and put that card onto the battlefield and then shuffle your library so it allows you to kind of like switch out that basic land that you didn't want for another one um by sacrificing it which is great another thing to note is that this is an instant so if you go back to what our commander did you yep. can copy this and get and that ha make that happen an additional time. So awesome and giving them counters, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, evolution charm. It's for one in a green and another instant, of course. And you get to choose one. Search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library, or return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand, or target creature gains flying until end of turn. So a really versatile card there for only two mana. It's awesome. Yeah. And then we have Harrow, which is basically the same thing as crop rotation. Sacrifice the land, search your library for two basic land cards, put them on the battlefield. Again, I, this is great because they come onto the battlefield, not just into your hand. Yep. And Natural Connection, another instant uh, for two and a green that lets you search your library for a basic land card, put on the battlefield, tapped, then shuffle your library. And again, you're doing that on someone else's turn, so it's awesome. Yeah. Arcane Signet is uh, soon becoming, or quickly becoming a commander staple. This is, of course, a mm -hmm. card that came out with Brawl, and it allows you to add one mana of any color in your commander's identity, which is fantastic. It only costs two, and anything that taps for any color of mana, in my mind, is perfect. <laughs> Especially with the three-color deck. Um, we've also got Commander Sphere, which is uh, an artifact for three, and it's the same thing. Add one mana of any color in your commander's identity, but you can also sacrifice it and draw a card. So that's awesome. Yeah. Card draw. <laughs> Bonder's Ornament is another great card. I love this card. I love the artwork on this card. It uh, is soon, I think, going to become a commander staple in and of itself. Cost three, you can add one mana of any color, but it also has the additional benefit of each player who controls a card of the same name gets to draw a card when you do this tap. So you get to draw a card, they get to draw a card, and if you have it in your deck, then you get to take advantage of that. So there's a little bit of politics that goes along with that, which is kind of cool. The next we have Soul Ring for one, which is, everybody loves it, add two colorless mana. <laughs> Right away. Mm -hmm. Can't go yeah. wrong with that. And then Wilderness Reclamation is a Ugh. perfect card for this deck. I, I love that they put card. it in here. I hate this card in general, <laughs> but it is definitely perfect for this deck. So for three and a green, at the beginning of your end step, you get to untap all the lands that you control. So you can use them on your turn as much as you mm -hmm. want at the on your end step. You untap them. They're ready to go for the next person's turn. So um that just helps you take advantage of those instances or sure. Then we have an interesting artifact called Lava Brink Floodgates. It's for three and a red, and you can tap to add two red mana with it. Um, and then at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player may put a doom counter on Lava Brink Floodgates or remove a doom counter from it. So everybody's turn, you're going to be doing this. Then if it has three or more Doom Counters on it, sacrifice Lava Brink Floodgates. When you do, it deals six damage to each creature. So it's a removal thing that's sitting there and people have to decide whether they're ready for it to go off mm -hmm. or not. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of crazy. I think that's... And again, it fits into two categories, yes. right? Yes. So yeah, I thought to put it in for two mana and then later on in the game, it's going to yeah. do some other stuff for you, so... 
it's awesome. Um, so there's a bunch of impetuses yeah. in this deck and in the new commander so set. Shiny <laughs> impetus is in here. He's adorable. Uh, adorable, but scary. The enchanted creature, that enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and goad. So for those of you who don't know what goad is or haven't seen any of our other videos, basically you're going to put this on a creature that is not your own creature because it is going to be encouraged to attack another player that is not <laughs> you as long as it can. And it has to re it has to attack each combat if able so that will either get rid of their creature because they have to attack with it and they're not attacking you so you can kind of pit people against each other or it'll allow you to get rid of if you put it on their big beefy thing it'll allow them to get rid of creatures for you on your behalf that your op other opponents are controlling so um, the reason it's in this category though is because whenever this creature attacks you get a treasure token so not only that, they have to decide, do I want to give this person a treasure token? Do I want to give them more mana? Um, a treasure token, you just get to sacrifice for any color of mana. So um, it's either going to make them stay put, it's going to make them attack somebody else, or it's going to kill their creature. With, with goad, so, they have to attack though, right? Yes. Right. They so have they to have, have to give you gold, gold or That's they can true. sacrifice. So they don't even get a choice. Yeah. 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 Thank you for... No, no problem. Then we're getting into the removal section. So the formula that we were talking about in, uh, in Leslie's video or that Leslie's talking about in her video. This one, uh, the formula is 15 and in this deck it has 13. So very on par there. Our first card there is Nimbus of Frost for two and two blue. It is a three, three flyer with prowess and prowess is that whenever you cast a non-creature spell it gets plus three plus three until end of turn so that's a good way to have for defense purposes or for attacking plus one plus, plus one. one plus one isn't that what i said no you said three did i say three? Oh, oh i wish, wish. yeah plus <laughs> one plus one sorry about that and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell you get to tap a target creature and opponent controls that creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So it's a very aggressive card and you're getting their blockers out of the way and you're just flying in there as hard as you can. So it's pretty strong. So I, yeah. I put it in comments. Sorry. I put it in removal because no, it's so ahead. big and you're tapping their stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah blue, that's how it yeah. removes stuff. It taps it, right? Uh, Comet Storm removes things in the way Comet Storms <laughs> do. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, first of all, this is two red and X. Uh, X is whatever mana you want to spend, for those that aren't familiar with X yet. Um, you choose target creature or player, then choose another target creature or player for each time Comet Storm was kicked. Comet Storm deals X damage to, that, to them. So, um, you're going to choose whatever X is. Let's say X is four. This is going to cost you six to cast. Then, um, if you decide that you want to kick it or kick it several times, um, you let you're playing with three other people. So you get Shauna. I'm going to target you with my first spell, and then I'm going to kick it twice. Pay an extra two mana of any color, and I'm going to have it do the exact same amount of damage to player two and player three so nice versatility and nice damage um it's also target creature or yeah, player so you can nice. remove their creatures you can remove all the creatures that one person has if you want to focus on someone so <laughs> again this uh deck has a lot of versatility in it so it's great Next we have Star Storm, which is a similar card. It's for X and two red and an instant as well. And Star, Star Storm deals X damage to each creature. So that's only for creatures, but uh, you do have the option on there for cycling uh, of three. So you can pay three and discard that card and get to draw a card. So that's a way to, if you don't need it, but normally you're gonna wanna keep that around <laughs> in your hand. Yeah. Artifact Mutation is a fairly basic uh, removal card. You're just destroying target artifact. It can't be regenerated. You get the additional create X11 green sapperling creature tokens where X is the number of artifacts. Or, or Sorry, X is the artifact's converted mana cost. So bigger artifact gets you more 1-1 one, one sapperlings, which you could use to sacrifice later on for some of the cards that require sacrificial creatures. <laughs> 
Prophetic Bolt for three, a blue, and a red. It is an instant that deals four damage to target creature or player. And look at the top four cards of your library. Put one of those into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So that's pretty sweet, especially if you can copy it. Pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Whiplash Trap, uh, this is how I imagine <laughs> every Dungeons & Dragons trap should look <laughs> when you're playing D&D. Yeah. Um, it's an instant, uh, and it costs three and two blue, so it is pretty expensive, but if an opponent had two or more creatures enter the battlefield under his control, his or her control this turn, you may pay a blue, <laughs> and rather than pay whiplashes, traps, mana costs. So not that expensive that way, and <laughs> I would recommend that is how you always play it wait until someone plays two or yeah. more creatures and then you get to return two target creatures to their owner's <laughs> hand so um i think it's important to remember too that it doesn't say two of that opponent's target creatures it just says return two target creatures to their owner's hand so shauna plays two creatures i can decide that Johnny Depp, who is sitting next <laughs> to Shauna, playing magic with us, of course, um, I can return his creatures to his hand because Shauna and I, we have kind of this vendetta against Johnny. <laughs> he doesn't share his rum with us very much. And so we're going to target him and work together. Yes. So. <laughs> and Johnny would like this card, Slice and Twain, for two and two green. <laughs> we're going to use our pirate's Cutlass and uh, destroy target artifact or enchantment and then draw a card. Slice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it fits in draw a card. Too, yeah. So that's great. <laughs> Tribute to the wild. Each opponent sacrifices an artifact or enchantment. It doesn't have to be nope. you, which is great. So I love those cards that your opponents have to do things. And Copy that one. Decoy, decoy, sorry, decoy gambit for two and a blue. It's an instant. For each opponent, choose up to one target creature that player controls, then return that creature to its owner's hand, unless its controller has you draw a card. So you're threatening them with this little carrot. You can either return that big mm -hmm. beastie boy, or you can let me draw a card. Yeah. So politics. So hard choices. Hard choices. <laughs> <laughs> Deflecting SWAT. Um, it's an, another instant that you can copy and should copy because <laughs> it only costs three. If you control a commander, um, you may cast this spell without paying its mana cost. You may choose new targets for uh, the target spells or abilities. So I like that it targets spell or ability, uh, so you can use abilities for that. Um, yeah, and if you control a commander, free. So basically what this is is when you when someone cast something against you you just swat it back at them mm -hmm. <laughs> at them or your opponent yeah. another opponent right yeah. you could because me and you we have this thing True. going in games yeah. johnny so you True. could target me with something because he has expert <laughs> oh no that wouldn't work but anyways you know what i'm getting yep. at <laughs> cool okay so ravenous gigantotherium <laughs> is this for a 3-3 three, three beast creature for 5 and 2 green. So he's a little pricey. But he has Devour 3. So what that means is at the as it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. And this creature then enters the battlefield with that many plus 1 counters on it. So you've got your little sapperlings out there or something. You can sacrifice those to put counters on this guy. Make him big. So also three times that three, many. Oh, sorry, three times that many. I missed that on the on the wording there. So three times that many. Whoops, that's a lot. Yeah. Um, so only one of them will get you three. Cool. So when Ravenous enters the battlefield, it deals X damage divided as you choose among up to X target creatures, where X is its power. Each of those creatures dealt damage deals damage equal to its power to back to you to this big guy, but you're making him like an 8-8 eight, eight or something like that, and you're dealing uh, a lot of damage <laughs> out there. Well, remember those sapperlings that we just got yeah. a couple cards ago? 
sacrifice three saprolines, get nine counters because it's three times right. three. And now he is mana now his power is twelve yep. and you're doing twelve damage, yep. right? So and divide it as you choose. That's a great card. Um Clash of Titans mm -hmm. is a nice little it's instant cool. that we can hopefully copy. Target creature fights another target creature and it doesn't have to be your target creature. It's not target creature you control. You can like anybody, you know, make Fight. Johnny and and <laughs> our friend Brad Pitt over there, who's also playing with us. Uh, Johnny and Brad's creatures are gonna yeah. fight each other. So yeah. sweet. And here's another one of those impetus cards, the predatory impetus for four and a green. It's a enchantment aura that you put on someone else's creature, and it uh, the enchanted creature gets plus three plus three plus three, and must be blocked if able and is goaded. So he has to attack with it and people have to block so let's get rid of some of their stuff yeah definitely so our next section um our preferred formula has 13 in it and our deck has 13 so it's right on par uh this is card draw and tutors um so the first one is Lunar Mystic. It's a human wizard that costs four, two, and two blue. And whenever you cast an instant or a sorcery, you may pay one, and if you do, draw nice. a card. Um, so it's just a nice little creature that's on there that gets you constant card draw, and that's, there's nothing like that's, that's all. That's really great. Uh, Melek, the Is It Paragon for four, blue and a red. It's a two, four, weird wizard. <laughs> And you get to play with the top card of your library revealed. And you may cast the top card of your library if it's an instant or sorcery. And whenever you cast mm -hmm. an instant or sorcery spell from your library, you get to copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. So you get to cast it and copy it at the same time. Yeah. Such mm -hmm. a good card. And we put it in the uh, card draw because you get to see an extra card. So I know there's no actual stuff on there that says draw card, but that's why it's in this section. Yeah, right, you Charlotte? get to play that card. So it's just like yeah. drawing it, in my opinion. Yeah. It's like having an extra card mm -hmm. in your hand, yep. right? Um, so Rashmi um, Eternities, Eternities Crafter is a legendary creature elf She's druid cool. for two and a green and a blue. She's a multicolor. Whenever you cast your first spell each turn. Now spells can be anything that you cast, creatures or instants or sorceries or enchantments. Uh, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a non-land card with a converted mana cost less than the spells, then you may cast it without paying its mana cost. Um, if you don't cast the revealed card, you get to put it in your hand. So you get a nice little <laughs> card draw or you get a, to play a free it. cast. Perfect card for this deck as nice. well. Chaos Warp for two and a red. It's kind of a weird card. I've never really liked this card, but it's probably because I don't understand it. Um, it's an instant, and the owner of Target Permanent shuffles it into their library, then reveals the top two cards of their library. If it's a permanent card, then put it onto the battlefield. So I'm not sure if you would do that to yourself or to other people. I guess probably depends on the situation, which is why it's called Chaos Warp. You're just causing chaos. Yeah, you, you might want to get rid of something that they've... Um that they've they have that's big that's causing you issues um also um if you use it on their commander they're not going to want to put their commander into the their library so um they're not going to get their commander back in to shuffle it in so true yeah. okay i never thought of that aspect of it right cool mm -hmm. cool uh, so Commune with Lava is an X mana cost card with two red and, as well. It's an instant, and you get to exile the top X cards of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play those cards. So something to remember that's important with this card is play means you have mm -hmm. to pay for them. You don't get to play <laughs> them without paying their mana cost. So you do have to have mana up, but if you have Wilderness Reclamation or some other way to untap your lands, then you don't have to worry about that. Um, and so just be cognizant of how many, you don't want to use up all of your land if you don't have any way yeah. to untap it, um, because then they're just going to be exiled. So just make sure like, you know, you have enough land to cast yeah. that and play. Then we have Chemistry's Insight, which is such a good card too. It's for three and a blue, and you get to draw two cards, and it has uh, Jumpstart 
which lets you play it again from your graveyard as long as you discard, um, is it two cards? Oh, no, just one. Just you, ca you can cast it again from your graveyard if you discard a card. Mm -hmm. So it's just really good card draw. So Shauna, this next card <laughs> is super cool because library. this is what we look like every day. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, uh, our day jobs, we're both librarians, <laughs> so that's why we're so yeah, cool. We love and books. Cards like with books. Um, <laughs> so Frantic Search uh, is an instant. It costs three. You get to draw two cards and discard two cards, untap um, up to three lands. So you get to untap some land. You get two cards. You get to get rid of stuff that you don't need. <laughs> perfect, perfect Digging card. through stuff. Of course, because there's a librarian on it. We always have the answer. Hunter's Insight for two and a green. It is an instant with really cool art on it. And you choose a target creature you control whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker this turn. Draw that many cards. So that's instant speed. So you kind of know which one is going to deal damage. So you play that card after. And yeah. I love that that card came up for you. Yeah. Of course it did. Because Wolf. Wolf. Growth Spiral, this can go in the Mana Wrap category or yeah. the Card Draw category, but we put it here because really, first words, draw a card. Draw a card. Um, <laughs> you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Two mana, mm -hmm. great card. Then we have a new card from the new set. Um, Look at that art. It's just gorgeous art. Um, Xerix, the Writhing Storm. For two, a green, a red, and a blue. It is a 3-5 legendary flying snake leviathan. Leviathan. And whenever an opponent draws a card, except the first one they draw in each of their draw steps, you get to create a 1-1 one, one green snake creature token. And oh. whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you and that player each draw that many cards. So potentially, you're drawing three cards, potentially? Well, and so are they, and then you get three snakes because they're drawing right cards on. that are their draw step. Right on, yeah. Right? So there's a lot of synergy in that yeah. card. Um, plus, I mean, what do we talk about for card draw? We need 15, or no, 13 for the formula. Yeah. Um, so they're going to have 13 cards that draw them cards as well. So you don't get a snake on the untap up, you draw, but you do get your snake anytime they draw a card outside of, and potentially you're pay playing with five other people or four other people. Um, so every time people draw a card that's not on their draw step, so many you get a snake. snakes. So yeah, so many snakes, and you can use them to sacrifice or to just go wide. So many great things. Glade Muse for three mana uh, is a nice little 2-4 beast creature. And when a player casts a spell, if it's not their turn, that player draws a card. So Who is that? remember we talked about <laughs> us waiting and yeah. using our instants and sorceries on, or sorry, our instants on other people's turns. That is why That's you're right. going to do them on somebody else's That's turn. Because right. <laughs> then you get to draw a card and replace it. Uh, Channeled Force for two, a blue and a red. It's an instant from the new set that has, as an additional cost to cast the spell, discard X cards. Target player draws X cards and Channeled Force deals X damage to up to one target creature or planeswalker. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You're going to do it to yourself, right? Yep. <laughs> Primal Empathy for one I and a green one. and a blue. So three. I believe this was in uh, the other, the evolution one, Enhanced Evolution that we did too. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, at the beginning of your upkeep, you draw a card. If you control a creature with the greatest power among creatures on the battlefield, um, otherwise you get to put a 1-1 one, one counter on a creature you control. So... Either way, there's something good happening, whether you have the biggest yep. creature or not, but eventually you will have the biggest creature, maybe, unless somebody gets rid of it. But if they get rid of that creature, you still have the enchantment. So it just keeps going. It's great. It's a gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> I can't wait to put that in a Simic deck that I'm going to make for sure. Um, then we're into the creature, high impact creatures and cards section and the formula says mm -hmm. 12 and this deck has uh, what we think is about 11 
So the first card we have here is Talrand, the Sky Summoner, and it's he's for two and a blue. He's a merfolk wizard, a 2-2. Two -two. And whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 2-2 two -two blue drake creature token with flying. So you're just going to fill the skies with drakes. Yeah, great impact there. Atali, Primal Storm. I love mm -hmm. this card in any dinosaur deck I've yep. ever made. I just love him anyway. But he's a 6-6 six, six for 6, which is super valuable as it is. Um, but when he attacks, you get to exile the top card of each player's library. And then you may cast any number of those cards without paying yeah. their mana cost. So we um, are taking advantage of, even if you just get to attack once, now I get to look at Shauna's top card. I get to look at Johnny's top card. I get to look at Brad's top <laughs> card. And then Sir Patrick Stewart, who's <laughs> sitting right next to me, his card. So we got like a great commander yep. crew. I know it's hard for you guys to imagine, but <laughs> we play commander with yep, the best. That's right. um, anyways, I get to cast the top card of their library for free. Um, now, if it's a land, you're mm. out of luck. But uh, you potentially got rid of the lands that they control. So because they just stay yep. in exile if you don't cast them. Yeah. Then we have Murmuring Mystic, which uh, is a 1-5 human wizard for three and a blue. And he makes, uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you create a 1-1 one, one blue bird illusion creature token with flying. So it does a lot of mm -hmm. uh, tokens as well. This one's annoying in any yep. deck. Crackling Drake, a uh, perfect card for taking advantage of instants and sorceries because its power is equal to the total number of instants and sorcery cards you own in exile mm -hmm. and in your graveyard. Yes. So if somebody exiles or you, you've you recast an instance or a sorcery and you had to exile it later, it still counts that card, which is great. And uh, it enters the battlefield, you get to draw a card. So nice little mm -hmm. benefit there. So the next two cards we have, they are those partner cards that we talked about it. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a partner in the previous set that we did as well. This one is Haldin the Avid Arc Arcanist. He's uh, for two and a blue, a one four. And he partners with uh, Paco the Arcane Retriever. And I'm so excited because he's a puppy. And when, um, so when this creature enters the battlefield, target player may put the, the Paco um, from their hand or into their hand from their library and then shuffle. Mm -hmm. So you may play a non-creature cards from exile with fetch counters on them. If you exiled them and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast those spells. So your little puppy is uh, the next thing for three and a red and a green. It's a three three and you partner with the arcanist and has haste and whenever he attacks, the puppy attacks, you exile the top card of each player's library and put a fetch counter on each of them. You put a 1-1 one, one counter That's on great. Paco for each non-creature card exiled this way. So you're basically making this little, this dog go and uh, fetch these cards for you fetch. that you can then use. And uh, yeah, <laughs> you can play them and it's going to make your dog bigger. You're just having a gay old time with your puppy. Yeah. <laughs> So I love that otters in this set. Yes. We have Aeon Frolicker. So cute. <laughs> uh, two and two blue. So for a 5-5. Five, five. So he's already awesome as a 5-5 five, five flyer for four. Um, but when he enters the battlefield, if you cast it, um, target opponent takes a extra turn after this one. So it can't be like if you, you, you got to cast it for free because there are some cards that allow you to do that but if you cast this card then until your next turn you and planeswalkers you control gain protection from a player um <laughs> so sorry you can't attack me um you can't target me you can't damage me um yeah but you get an extra great. turn you get an extra turn <laughs> yeah so kill all my friends That's right because patrick patrick and me we're buddies, and so, you know, he's going to kill off Johnny That's and Brad right. for us. I think you should do the shapeshifter as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, 
The scent metam- metamorph, another little shapeshifter. Uh, he looks like an otter, so he's super <laughs> yeah. cute. For two, he's a 1-1 one, one for two, and when he attacks or blocks, target opponent reveals a card from the top of their library until they reveal a creature card. Um, and then uh, Nascent, you just wanted me to do this one because it's <laughs> pronounced. Uh, metamorph becomes a copy of that card until the end of turn. Then that player puts all cards revealed this way at the bottom of their library in random order. So there, you're just going to pick someone. It could be yourself, uh, but likely you want it to become a creature. It can't be yourself. Probably yeah. a creature that somebody else controls. Right, it can't be yourself. So you pick the person that has the biggest, beefiest creatures. They're going to keep revealing until Get one. a creature is revealed. Mm-hmm. Now you have a creature that's that creature, and it goes to the bottom of their library after. So Sweet. hopefully you yeah, good. Yeah, exactly. Um, Charm Breaker Devils for five and a red. It's a four, four, and at the beginning of your upkeep, return an instant or sorcery spell uh, card at random from your graveyard to your hand. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Charmbreaker Devils gets plus four, plus zero until end of ter- turn. Nasty. That's he crazy is amount. A devil. That's not just prowess. That's, that's insane. That's freaking crazy. Jim <laughs> uh, Illuminatus. Illuminatus. <laughs> Illuminatus. It's like the Illuminati. Um, five and hybrid mana, hybrid mana. So it costs seven. It's a flyer for three, five. Mm-hmm. But each instant and sorcery spell that you cast has replicate. The replicate cost equal to its mana cost. So basically it allows you to cast it um, and copy it for each time you paid its replicate cost. Um, so basically you're just going to replicate it again and choose new targets for the copies right on it's a great little duplicate <laughs> then we have a card that i know a lot of people will be excited about jace architect of thought for two and a blue is in this deck he is a four loyalty planeswalker plus one is until your next turn whenever a creature and opponent controls attacks it gets minus one minus zero until end of turn so you're just getting them to back off and minus two is reveal the top three cards of your library and opponent separates those cards into two piles put one pile into your hand and the other on the bottom of your library in any order so you get to pick right yeah yeah and minus eight for each player search that player's library for a non-land card and exile it then that player shuffles their library you may cast those cards without paying their mana costs how rude i love anything that's not yeah, and you just go cost. get whatever you want. So then um, our next section is other cards on theme slash other win conditions slash specialty <laughs> cards slash anything cool else stuff. left over. Um, so cool <laughs> stuff. Uh, so our preferred formula says let's use 10 cards in that category. This one has about 12 cards that we felt didn't really fit in any other category which is about right on par. The first one is Dual Caster Mage for one and two red. Um, It's definitely on theme. It has flash. You can cast it on somebody else's turn, which you should. (laughs) And uh, when it enters the battlefield, you get to copy target instant or sorcery spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. So they cast um, their instant or sorcery. You play this uh, card in response. It comes in. You choose to target instant or sorcery they cast, and you get to choose new target for it. Sweet. Yeah. Goblin Dark Dwellers is kind of a creepy card, but uh, it's for three and two red, a four, four goblin with menace. And when it enters the battlefield, you may cast target instant or sorcery card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. If that card would be put into your graveyard this turn, exile it instead. So another way to get another use of your instances, go grab them. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So Ward the Raid Mother is a fun card for this deck. If you haven't seen yet, we do have a commander <laughs> video uh, that outlines a Ward the Raid Mother deck as the commander itself, but she goes good in this deck as well. Uh, when Ward the Raid Mother enters the battlefield, you get to create two one when red and green goblin warrior creature tokens. Each red or green instant or sorcery spell you cast has Conspire. Mm-hmm. So Conspire 
as you cast the spell, you may tap two untapped creatures you control and that share a color with it. And when you do, you get to copy it. Um, you may choose new targets for the copy. So basically, she creates these little goblins that you can use to copy your yeah. spells with. Um, so she gives you just another way of paying for your instant and sorcery spells that are red and green in the nice. deck. Which there are a lot. Yeah. Um, speaking of, here is the Sorcery Surreal Memoir for three and a red. And this one, return an instant card at random from your graveyard to your hand. And it has rebound. So if you cast this spell from your hand, exile it as it resolves. At the beginning of your next upkeep, you may cast this card from exile without paying its mana cost. So you get to do it again and get another one. It's just such mm -hmm. a useful card. <laughs> Let's get the stuff yeah. over again. Uh, so Strength of the Tajuru um, has multi-kicker. We talked about that already, but it has two green and X. You get to choose target creature, then choose another target creature for each time that this card was picked. And you get to put X 1-1 one, one counters on each of them. So not only are you multi-kicking so that you can copy it. If you copy this spell, then you get to do that an additional mm -hmm. time. Um, with the same, when you copy spells that already have numbers chosen, so X is already chosen, then X is the same in the copied spell. Um, same with any other additional cost that you play. So multi-kicker is considered an, an additional cost. So if X is four and you've chosen multi-kicker two, then the copy of that X is four and multi-kicker is yep. two as well. So Cool, cool. Hunting pack yep. for five and two green. This very cool instant is basically create a four, four green beast creature token. It has storm. So when you cast this spell, copy it for each spell cast before it. So, yeah, this is where you need lots of mana. We haven't even talked about Storm with no. this deck. But, yes, there are so <laughs> many. We didn't even look no, at Storm. Didn't. But, yeah, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, Teamer Charm, because um, this is, of course, a Teamer deck. There. So, for those of you who aren't sure what Teamer is, Teamer is just a faction. Um, and it refers to the colors green, blue, and red, um, which is what the costs are yeah. for this. Instant card, choose one. Target creature you control gets plus one, plus one until the end of turn. It fights target creature you don't control. Well. Or you can choose to counter target spell unless it's control of place three. Or you can, creatures with power three or less can't block this turn. So lots of versatility with that card. And if you copy it, you have even more. <laughs> And then I think one of the reasons why this deck is so popular is because it has a Lightning Greaves in it, and that's a very popular commander card. Um, yeah. For two, it, it's an artifact equipment, and equipped, cre uh, equipped creature has haste and shroud. So shroud, and the equip is zero. <laughs> so um, mm -hmm. um, shroud, it can't be, that creature can't be the tar target of spells or abilities. So that includes your own, though. So it's... Um, little more hidden than hexproof even it's just it's just not there it's hiding but because it's uh equip cost is zero you can you and you equip and unequip at sorcery speed on right. your main phase you can um unequip it do whatever you want to mm -hmm. your creature Put and then equip it at yeah. no cost so yeah unless they would do that so <laughs> i yes. always do that actually <laughs> and her kitty cat deck yeah <laughs> Swarm Intelligence for six and a blue, so it's a really expensive card. Let's find out why it's <laughs> expensive. It's an enchantment, and whenever you cast an instant or a sorcery spell, you may copy that spell. You may choose new targets <laughs> for the copy. All the time. Again, that's copying it, so when you copy, you don't have to pay for it. Um, yeah, <laughs> great card. It's just like an enchantment to yep. have on the battlefield, so not only... Not only do you have your copy that your commander has created, you also have a copy that this is it's created. Crazy. I really like this card, Curious Herd, for three and a green, just because it's just cool. Um, choose target opponent. You create X three three green beast creature tokens, where X is the number of artifacts that player controls. So I am definitely playing this against Leslie's cat deck. Speaking of cat decks, 
Because it's got lots of cats and lots of equipment. So, and the flavor text on this one, if you don't break camp as you leave, you'll return to find it broken for you. And that's literally, yeah. that's what cows do. <laughs> if you leave stuff out, yeah. they're going to move it, trash it, rub against it, make a big mess. So, it's yeah. very funny. Anyway, that's why I like this card. <laughs> yeah. Twinning staff is also a fun card. It's three mana cost artifact. If you would copy a spell uh, one or more times, instead copy it that many times plus an additional time, you may choose new targets for the additional copy. Uh, so <laughs> you can also pay seven, tap it to copy a instant and sorcery spell you control, and you may choose new targets for the copy. So... If you don't have a way to copy your spells, <laughs> this has its own way of copying and you get to do it an additional time. And if you have your commander out, that's another time. And if you have swarm intelligence, <laughs> that's another time. So you're going to need your, a piece of paper. <laughs> uh, five damage. You will need another. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is definitely Keep going to be a note where you're going. In, when you're saying on everybody else's turn, oh, by the way, in response, I'm going to copy this. Gonna be like, Seriously, <laughs> again? <laughs> you can put a big target on your head like this next card has. Yeah. <laughs> uh, psychic impetus for two and a blue. It's an aura that uh, enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and is goaded. And whenever the enchanted creature attacks, you get to scry two. So we put that on someone else's card and or creature and you're just going to be able to scry all the time whenever it attacks. It's nice. Mm -hmm. Oh. Sorry, phone call. <laughs> of, of course. course. <laughs> Always yeah. when you're filming. Anyways, ignore <laughs> that. Um, so our next section is mm -hmm. land. We're not going to spend a ton of time on land. Um, basics around land are you should have between 32 and 36 in a commander deck. 34 is probably good with this deck. You don't need 38. This deck has 38. Our formula, preferred formula, says 32. But because you do have to pay for some of those instants and sorceries, um, you know, you definitely want to have a decent number of land. Um, but definitely don't need 38 land. Uh, so Desolate, de or the first few I'll just quickly go through. Uh, Desolate Lighthouse, these are lands that do other things. So this one allows you to draw a card and discard a card. Scavenging Grounds lets you to exile, lets you exile all cards from all graveyards. So that helps with some of those graveyard shenanigan decks. Um, the Kessig Wolf Run allows a uh, target creature to get plus X plus zero and gain trample until the end of turn. So it does help those uh, target creature or trample if you do attack with a creature, especially since your commander is getting bigger and bigger and yep. bigger. So keep that in mind. You will attack with him sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, Myriad Landscape also allows you to sacrifice it and search for two basic land cards. So it's a nice little uh, go get what you need. And then Ruptured Spire enters the battlefield. You have to uh, sacrifice it if you don't play one, but it taps for any color of mana. So dual lands. What do we got for dual lands, um, Well, the, the Moss Fire Valley is kind of a cool old land, but it uh, you can pay one and tap it and add red and green, which is kind of cool. And uh, then you've also got red and green Cinder Glade and Gruel Turf. The Cinder Glade, um, yeah, the Gruel Turf lets you add both, but you have to return a card to your hand. Uh, Rugged Highlands as well is another one. It's the life gain one. Um... Oh yeah, Moss Mosswort Bridge is another weird one. It has hideaway, so it enters the battlefield tapped, and when it does, uh, look at the top four cards of your library and exile one face down. Then put the card on the bottom, or sorry, the rest on the bottom of your library. So, I think Leslie, you've played this one in your cat deck, right? This one. Yeah, this one's in yeah. my cat deck. Yeah, so you just sure. tuck away something that you're going to play later on, and and. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's kind of cool. And then we have Orin Reef, the Vast Wood. It's uh, another one that you can use. You can tap it and put a 1-1 counter on each green creature that enters the battlefield this turn. So that's really handy to use. Mm -hmm. And remember those goblins. Those goblins are all green and red, yeah. so they count. 
that worked yep. creeds. Um, so command tower is, uh, so we have a bunch of lands, not a bunch, but we have some lands that tap for any color manner. So command tower is one of those. Uh, uh, Frontier bivouac will tap for any of the colors that you have in this deck. It, it's all three. And exotic orchard will tap for any one mana of any color that an opponent controls. So that doesn't necessarily get you what you need, but likelihood depending on how many people you're playing you're going to get a couple um out there uh how more depths um enters the battlefield you get to look at the top three cards of your library and then put them back in any order so it's a nice little scry there um you don't get to decide whether to put them on the back or on the bottom but you do definitely get to decide what order you're going to draw them in so yeah, and then we've got the equivalent um, red and blue things that we had for the green ones where uh, one you gain life and the other one uh, you have to, you get both red and blue, but you have to return a land to your hand. And then we've got some green and blues as well. Um, the Yavama Yavamaya Coast. Oh, sorry, I didn't say what they were. That what they were. They're Swift Water Cliffs and Is It Boiler Works. Uh, Yavamaya Coast is the one that's blue and green and it deals one damage to you when you use it though. And Simic Growth Chamber, uh, it's another one of those ones that you can tap it and it's, you have to return a land to your hand, but it's both green and blue. And Thornwood Falls is the life gain for green and blue as well. And then we've also cool. got uh, eight forests and five islands and five mountains in there too. Mm -hmm. So that's where I think I would recommend starting to tweak the deck is, is with those uh, basic mm -hmm. lands, which brings us to our next mm -hmm. section, the most uh, awaited <laughs> for section. I know you guys were like waiting with bated breath for this section. No, in all <laughs> seriousness, that's the breakdown of this deck. So if you don't need tweaks or you don't want tweaks, you're welcome to turn it off now. But if you want some tweaks, we have some tweaks for you in some of the different categories that we think might make this deck just a little bit better. It's a decent deck as it is. Um, but we'll jump right into it with some land tweaks because we just talked about land. I'm just going to go through all of them if that's sure. okay, yeah, uh, Shauna, um, because it's quick. Um, so this deck doesn't have a lot of like go search for land so we thought fabled passage and evolving wild would mm -hmm. be good and then as far as um other types of colors so castle embrith castle garenbrig and castle vantress all have other abilities that um, will be beneficial to this deck. So if you can put them in, that will be helpful. And then the last land that we were thinking might be a good one for this deck is Relinquy Tower because it will allow you to have no maximum hand size. Remember, a lot of our mana ramp and a lot of our card draw are instants. And if we're copying those cards, we're drawing a lot of cards and we don't want to have to discard them uh, into our graveyard because our hand size is too uh, small. So this allows you to have no maximum hand yep. size. So we thought that would be good. And that's another thing I just want to point out with that. And that's another reason why it's good to play those card drawings on someone else's turn because you can have mm -hmm. 10 cards in your hand on someone else's turn. It's not till the end of your turn that you would have to discard those cards so yes. use that uh, card draw when you can on everybody else's turn for sure um, mm -hmm. speaking of card draw there was a couple little cards in here that uh, that Leslie thought for for um, card draw tweaks that we maybe don't need because there is quite a bit of card draw in here but these ones are a little special because they've got some extra stuff on them I really like aggressive urge it's for one in a green an instant that gives your target creature plus one plus one until end of turn so a great little combat trick that also lets you draw a card as well so I think that's a great idea yeah um, another card draw in this um, was Arrester's Admonition. Um, it allows you to return target creature to its owner's hand, but if you cast it on your the spell during your main phase, you get to also draw a card. So there's a little bit of control, a little bit of removal, as well as um, drawing a card if you do it on your main phase. Now, we did talk about wanting to cast on other people's turns, so the nice thing about this card is it has the versatility of if you need that card draw, you can cast it on your own. So, Yeah. And then there is a betrayal in, um, enchantment 
for just one blue and it uh, you play it only on a creature and opponent controls and if the enchanted creature becomes tapped you get to draw a card so they're not going to want to swing with it for sure mm -hmm. yeah um so we also were thinking maybe that this uh, commander needs a little bit of help so while it does get big every time you uh copy an instant or a sorcery and you probably will be swinging in with it if they have death touch or they have you know something that allows them to kill uh, attacking or blocking creatures those types of things you need ways to tap your commander so that it will copy spells um before you attack or without attacking so there's a few things that we found that might help with that if you wanted to add them to this deck. Aura of Dominion was an enchant creature, so you could enchant any of your creatures. And you play one, pay one, and tap an untapped creature you control, and then untapped cre uh, enchanted creature. So you could swing in with one of your other creatures, and then you can tap your commander, and untap this creature to have a blocker, or at the very least, you can just um, tap commander with this, which yeah. is great. Um, Amber Prison, it's an artifact for four, yeah, and great. you may choose not to untap Amber Prison during your untap step. And then you pay four and you tap target artifact, creature, or land. As long as Amber Prison is, uh, is tapped, that permanent doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. So you can get this card to tap your commander so that it's tapped and then you just leave it like that. And so then you're copying yeah. all your spells all the time, which is really cool. Yeah. And later on when you don't need to tap your commander this way, yeah. then you can use that as um, like controlling yeah. somebody else's creature. Totally. Which is Bounding Crisis is a one and a green and a blue for a flash creature. Again, Sweet. casting on someone else's turn. When it enters the battlefield, you may tap or untap target creature. So if you didn't end up attacking with your creature or figuring out a way to tap your commander um, on their turn, you can flash something in and then you tap your commander and haha, you didn't know I could copy spells. <laughs> Evil, haha. <laughs> Uh, Crown of Empires for two is an artifact that lets you pay three and tap this artifact and you can tap target creature, uh, gain control of that creature instead if you control artifacts named Scepter of Empires and Throne of Empires. So um, mostly you're just using it to tap your commander. <laughs> mm -hmm. So mana ramp in this deck was lacking a little bit and we thought that there was a maybe room for a couple of mana ramp cards for this deck. Um, Animist Awakening, you get to reveal the top X cards of your library, and then you can put all land cards from among them onto the battlefield, tapped, and the rest on the bottom of your library in random order. The nice thing about this card is it also has spell mastery, and if there are two or more instant or sorcery cards in your graveyard, which there <laughs> will be, you get to untap those lands. So that those lands come in untapped basically yeah and the other one uh, bear umbra for two and two green it's an enchantment you enchant a creature and it gets plus two plus two and has whenever this creature attacks untap all lands you control so it's giving your mm -hmm. lands using using them again which is nice <laughs> yeah and uh so we've talked a lot about like untapping lands that you control um and trying to figure out ways to for them to come in which brings us to other perfect cards for this mm -hmm. deck and uh expansion explosion is one of those number one expansion just allows you to copy so it's right on theme there um explosion part of this deck allows you to deal x damage to a target any target which could be them and target player draws x cards so you get to draw a bunch of cards you do x damage <laughs> And if you have ways to untap your mana constantly, uh, which we have another few suggestions a little bit later, this can get really big really fast. Um, I don't know if any of you have been playing against the commander or standard, the standard deck yeah. right now that has a couple wilderness reclamations. Of course, you can't yeah. put a couple in a commander deck, but there's other ways to untap land. And so if you get a bunch of ways to untap land, then this can get fairly big. And especially if you copy it and <laughs> X is whatever you copied it at. So yeah, it's very annoying. 
Um, Bane Fire is an Ooh. annoying card as well when it gets copied because it's for X and one red only a sorcery and it deals X damage to any target. And if X is five or more, the spell can't be countered and the damage can't be prevented. So you're going to make sure it's five at least and copy it as much as you can. Yeah. It's crazy. So electricery, I love this little <laughs> picture on there because it's a cute little fairy. Well, maybe not cute, but, you know. <laughs> on fire. Anyway, it's an instant. Like, really, I mean, it's one. It does one damage. Why would you want mm -hmm. that? Because it has overload. What is overload? Well, overload, you can pay two mana, one in a red, and cast this spell for its overload, or sorry, cast the spell for its overload cost if you do change its text by replacing all instants um of target with each so instead of target creature it's each creature um it's a board wipe yeah. it can be very and very easily it can be especially if you copy it right so you copy copy <laughs> copy speaking of copying Reverberate is uh, a really good card to include in this deck. So it's two red and you get to copy target instant or sorcery spell and you may choose new targets for the copy. So copy that. <laughs> copy the copy. Copy. Copy that. <laughs> Howl of the Horde uh, is a sorcery for three and when you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for that spell. This one has raid, so if you attacked with a creature this turn, which I mm -hmm, would always mm -hmm. do use the raid casting ability for this, um, then when you cast your next insert or sorcery this turn, you copy that spell an additional time and choose new targets for the copy. So you can just imagine all of the things <laughs> that you already have on the battlefield for copying spells, and then you play one thing that does one damage, and all of a sudden it does 12, And you copy the copies. Yeah, it's complicated. It's ridiculous. <laughs> um, Wildest Dreams, I thought was a good one to put in here because it's uh, for 2x and a green. It's a sorcery that you get to return X target cards from your graveyard to your hand and then you exile Wildest Dreams. So it's just a great way to get all those instances back again and be able to do all that over again, which is nice. Yeah. Um, as far as untapping lands, we have Awakening for two in to green it's an enchantment at the beginning of each player's upkeep you get to untap all creatures and land so for um, everyone you have for everyone but you have used all your land wilderness reclamation <laughs> untaps all your land you it's ready to go for the next turn but then at the end of their turn you untap at the beginning of everybody's upkeep and you have all these lands <laughs> that you can use and a ton of instants and flashcards in your deck. Yeah, you're gonna be able to take advantage of it more than other people. Um, Spellbook yeah. costs zero, it's a cool artifact and it's a book and you have no maximum hand size because you know everything because you're a librarian like us. You are a librarian <laughs> like us. So you you know, if you we, we can make you sure. an honorary librarian. We are okay with that if you are on the tap that in team. <laughs> um. That's right. <laughs> so that is the commander deck for this week or this time. Uh, thank you so much for watching, watching and listening. We are, of course, available on YouTube and podcast, wherever you like to download your podcasts. We'd love it if you connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. We love to talk to you. We do read all your comments and try and comment back and, and say hi. Uh, we love your suggestions. So if you have more suggestions mm -hmm. or tweaks or you have other things that you've noticed with this deck that maybe we didn't notice or didn't realize, then definitely send us a shout out somewhere in uh, the social world um, yeah so yeah I guess that's it for this time and uh, until next time tap those magic cards and have fun doing it thanks guys bye okay.